New day, new creepypasta. This time we're going for Nina the Killer. Now, if I remember correctly from uh, her backstory, it well, from what I can remember at the moment, is that her backstory was supposed to be similar to Jeff the Killer's, which is why in her backstory she supposedly has a crush on Jeff and tries to make it to where she pretty much has somewhat the somewhat the same appearance as him hence why her skin ends up being bleach white and she has the grin cut into her cheeks a little bit crazy one but let's fully get into her backstory shall we I think it's about time we got into the backstory for Nina the Killer. Right off the bat with a notice. This is an example of what you should not make your character into. Nina is an example of what a blatant, mediocre creepypasta Mary Sue looks like. It lacks any creativity. Stop making the page move, you stupid ads. It lacks any creativity and originality, and it's just a carbon copy of an already existing creepypasta, Jeff the Killer. Please do not mistake her as an actual series creepypasta, because she is just a spin-off pasta OC. Really? Because there are some people that still uh, like to think of Nina as her own uh, creepypasta story. It's just that she's a diehard fangirl of Jeff the Killer. That's the that's the uh, storyline that most people like to go with. Also, why is this highlighted? And I'm not going to worry about it. Go to sleep, my prince. Uh, Nina the Killer's most famous quote. Nina the Killer, or Nina Hopkins, is the titular main antagonist of the creepypasta story of the same name, Nina the Killer. Nina was once a normal fangirl of Jeff the Killer, but turned into an insane and remorseless serial killer after one horrible day at school. Uh, wait. What is this? Warning. Any cuts the creator has made will be taken into account. The story summary has been made to be as accurate as possible to the originally published. Any attempts to bring up cuts slash taken information from the story will not be counted as canon if the original story entirely has already been cropped slash changed and yes the story has been changed to fit the story around in the links given in the facts section of the page apologies to any mistakes made beforehand about the tale i feel like this is going to take a while so i'll try to be quick about it she started as a normal fangirl of Jeff. Nina would adore the creepypasta character for nearly every quality about him and continue to read the story Chris wouldn't mind the obsession and would look up to his sister. They both got along quite well with the occasional nickname Nina gave Chris like Prince for his appearance being oddly similar to the common fairy tale. However, after attending their school, a few bullies, the ringleader being a slightly older girl by the name of Claudia and her associates Malcolm and Yoni, had begun to harass Nina and Chris. With the first incident of the harassment leading to Nina almost killing her bullies, Chris is obviously disturbed by the events as Nina begins to explore her more violent nature, finding a link with the behavior towards her idol, Jeff. Nina went to change into some fresh clothes, and as the room is revealed, Nina owns more possessions related, relating to the creepypasta character, such as posters, clothes, notebooks, stuffed animals, and dolls. One doll that she kept within her closet and whispers that Jeff had made so. After returning to school, a letter was found in her locker dealing, de detailing how she was caught in the act of attempted murder, but was instead complimented for her extreme skill. No signature was found on a note, but Nina seemingly knew the culprit behind the message given to her. 
During the second incident with her bullies, they decided the smartest decision was to to make was to quickly kidnap and beat up uh, beat Chris up before returning him to Nina after lunging him out of a uh, lunging him out of a car. Frustrated and triggered by the events against her innocent brother, Nina refused to harm someone as revenge, but informed her mother instead so Chris could receive medical attention, unknowing about the culprit behind the crime. Nina then decided to stay off school for a few weeks to help her brother recover from his internal and external wounds. Another letter, upon returning to school, is found by this anonymous writer describing their sympathy towards the matter that befell Chris, asking that they will be her friend, causing Nina to blush with excitement. The day goes as usual, with picture day arriving and Nina doing what many would assume, dressing similar to Jeff the Killer. Okay. So far off to a hard start. The day had passed, but uh, the day had passed. But by the next, the trio eventually found Nina and Chris and Claudia. At this stage, had a norm had a more harmful weapon than a knife, a gun apparently. They chased Nina into an abandoned house nearby, leading to an almost fatal shootout with Nina, successfully dodging the bullets fired at her and escaping into a bathroom. But, much to Nina's horror, Claudia begins to mention their attack to Chris, which is the ultimate trigger to break Nina's sanity. Finding an iron rod to attack back, she first strikes Yoni's head, causing blood to splatter everywhere in the process. Malcolm and Claudia, shocked and disgusted by her terrifying look of insanity, take a few steps back before Malcolm becomes her next target. Nina and Chris leave the horrific scene where she later on decides to find any bleach to mimic Jeff's disfigurement. To Nina's surprise, and the audience's, Jeff finally makes his appearance in this scene. He informs her, while holding the bottle of bleach in his hand, that she has the potential needed to become a killer like himself. So, with his assistance, Nina begins to set ablaze as her screams echo throughout the house, leading Chris and their mother rushing to Nina's aid. As a result, a bucket of water was poured onto her to stop the fire spreading further across the face slash body before an ambulance was arrived to carry Nina away to recover from her wounds. She woke up with bandages around her face. She walked to what she thought was a mirror and started to run, unwrap her beautiful bandages. She finished and saw herself in the mirror. She had almost white skin with a leather-like texture. I'm beautiful, but not done yet. She punched the mirror corner and picked up a shard of glass. She started to slit her cr the creases of her mouth just like Jeff. There it is. Her mom walked in, horrified by what she had seen. Aren't I beautiful, mommy? She asked. Her mom screamed and started to run, but Nina was too fast. She took the mirror shard and slit her mother's throat. A doctor ran in along with three police officers. They tranquilized her and took her to an asylum. She woke up in a white padded room in a straitjacket. A nurse was next to her, stitching up her recent cuts. Nina tugged and moved, but was locked down. It wasn't long before she passed out. She woke up another time, but in a different room and with no jacket. It was an empty room with a window covered by bars, an iron door, and a small white bed. Nina had f gone fully insane. She ripped apart the mattress, getting a spring, and calling for help. A doctor came rushing in, and she slit his throat the moment he came in and ran. She was fast and bolted for the door. People were so scared, the doors got malfunctioned out open by the blood on the doctor's tablet, which controlled them, and Nina managed to escape the asylum. The first place she went to was her home. She got there and beat on the door. It was around 3 a.m., so she had an advantage. Her father came to the door and was immediately shocked to see who was at the front door. His daughter, stitched up on one side of her mouth, white and leathery, and standing right in front of him. He tried to shut the door, but Nina pushed him back, and he fell on the corner of a table, got cut by it, and bled to death. Then she grabbed a kitchen knife and headed upstairs. She entered Chris's room. Do you want to join me? She asked Chris. He woke up and gently shook his head. She nodded and said, Good, while plunging the knife deep into Chris's chest. Covering his mouth with her hand, before her brother took his last breath, she whispered, Go to sleep, my prince. Before running out the house in search of her one and true love, Jeff. So 
so she's not just a straight up copycat and a fangirl. She's apparently also a yender as well. Oh no. Nina's appearance is identical to Jeff's, emulating his pale white complexion and Chelsea grin. But instead of having burnt off eyelids, she instead sewn her eyelids wide open. In a canon story, she is described as wearing a fuchsia colored hoodie, a black miniskirt, red and black thigh high socks, and purple Converse shoes. Her hair is jet black and is tied into a high ponytail in a bright red bow. Her hair has a single magenta streak, which she dyed herself. Before losing her best friends, she was a happy, sweet, social girl. When the two best friends died, she became quiet and less social due to the bullying. After finding out who, after finding out who's Jeff the killer, she became insane and isolating herself. That changes after going to, uh, going to an asylum. She then started talking about unnecessary topics like a wall and going even like a wall and going even more insane. She finally broke out of the asylum and met Jeff, but that but that wasn't pretty though. To this day, she still wants to find Jeff. She tends to dress like Jeff to try and think like him. She'll do anything to find him. Oh boy. Nina the Killer was created by Elogotic Twevel. She's about 15 to 17 years old. Like Jeff, Nina also uses a kitchen knife to kill. Before going insane, she had light ivory skin and light brown hair. Her enemies are Clockwork and Jane the Killer. I was expect I was definitely expecting Jane the Killer, but I was not expecting Clockwork. Why is Clockwork an enemy? I have no idea. She likes the sight of blood and killing, a somewhat underestimated creepypasta. It's much speculated that Nina knows about Jane the Killer not liking her. Ironically, her backstory is similar to her crush, Jeff. Yep. The original story was written in Spanish, which can be found there, which can be found here. I'm not clicking that because I can't read Spanish for the life of me. And the translation into English can be found here. I'm not going to bother clicking on that because I want to make this as quick as possible. She has a 2021 version, which was revamped by her original creator. Okay. Yeah, all right. So remember, you got this picture of Nina, the red and black thigh-high socks, black miniskirt, the... What did it say the color was again for the hoodie? I just... I'm so dumb. Fuchsia. So fuch uh, it's fuchsia purple, it looks like. Pretty much, obviously, of course, the first picture to show up in the search is the one from the site. There is... This is a spot-on picture right here. You can even see the stitches on her eyelids where she's sewn them open and the slits on her lip. I can faintly see the purple streak in her hair too, right there. Okay then, there's this picture too where it shows Jeff and Nina next, uh, side by side with each other. Oh, these, just these two alone look like they're about ready to have a fun time killing in the night. Hey you, yes you, behind the camera. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Hey, this entire month of October 2022, there's going to be one creepypasta video a day throughout the entire month. So, if you don't want to miss the chance of catching the next one being uploaded, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, ring the bell for notification. And if you really liked this video, make sure to leave a like on the video as well. Put a comment down below, tell me what you thought of it. But other than that, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.